Hi viewers, welcome to ACFA AD blog. And today will be a special video because we'll be looking at a 2022 Nico Biology practical. And then if you are new in this channel, hit the subscription button. Uh, have any question, you have any question, you go to this comment section and drop your question. Okay. We'll look at the analysis of the Nico. 2022 practicals interpretation and then preempting the examiner's mind and their point of view. Okay, we have this placement from A to L. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at placement A, B, and then C. We we'll start from a, a placement A, which is a microscope. Okay, a microscope. In um, secondary school level, uh, microscope use for investigation are those that are simple microscope. We have four main types of microscope. One, we have a simple microscope. Two, we have compound microscope. Three, we have electron microscope. And then the fourth one is a uh, stereo microscope. But then in secondary school, the type of microscope we use for investigation is a simple microscope. Okay, whether it's a simple microscope or complex or compound microscope or electron microscope or whatever form of microscope it is, microscope has three main parts, three main regions. The three main regions of a microscope are the head of the microscope, the base, and then the handle. There are the three parts of a microscope. The head, the base, and then the what? The handle. Okay. Now the head it bears the part called the eyepiece. Yes, the eyepiece is also known as the ocular part of it. The ocular. Ocular. Some of the microscopes that are simple can come in form of a monocular or ocular. Monocular means that it doesn't have two eyepieces, it does have one eyepiece in it. Just one eyepiece that is for those that are simple. But compound microscope, another form of microscope, like a electron microscope, do come with a double lenses called binocular microscope. So these are the parts of the structure or the, the part of microscope at the head region. And again, in the head region, also, we also see a micro a eye tube. The microscope tube, okay, the tube that runs from the lens, the eye lens or the eyepiece down to the adjustment table or adjustment knob. Then the head, the head is being connected to the base by the handle. The role of the base is to carry the whole of the microscope and it is a form that is most likely kept on the table. It sits the microscope on the table through a base. So the base hold other parts of the microscope. Then the handle ensure that the head, the head is connected towards the base and it is carefully handled because the role of the microscope in a, a microbiological field, when we're talking about microbiology, microscope, we're talking about microbiology because most microorganisms under investigation we use usually investigate microorganisms using a microscope because a microscope is a device and is an optical instrument that can magnify organism that cannot be ordinarily seen with a uh, naked eye. So with the aid of microscope, these organisms are well seen. Okay, these are the introductory part of a microscope. For this particle biology, we are going to be looking at the microscope in this view. Okay, what do you observe? The examiner will want to know the observable feature of a microscope. What and what is observed, like I said earlier, that the microscope has three main parts. The head, the base, and the handle. In the head region, there is your eyepiece. Your eyepiece or your ocular lenses. You have your eye tube, and then you have your adjustment table. Adjustment table where a slide is kept for investigation. Remember, like I said before, the rule, the function, one function of this microscope is to, it is used to see organism to view to visualize organism that can ordinarily not be seen with a naked eye so these organisms are seen 
no matter how minute, how small they are, a microscope is well suited to see this organism. So these are the questions that may be maybe coming out of this question. What is the function of the microscope? What is it used for? It is used optimally to visualize organism, microorganisms, specified microorganisms that cannot be seen with naked eye. You don't have any business using a uh, microscope to visualize or to see organisms that can be seen with your eye. So once an organism cannot be seen, there are millions of organisms, microorganisms that cannot be seen with our eye. So these organisms are seen with the help of a microscope. As far as this exam is concerned, I don't think that a further question will not be asked as regard microscope. So at this level, at O level, ordinary level, the role of microscope is to see, and what we use most often is a simple microscope, not those on a powerful electron microscope. Okay, that is on microscope. And then we look at the ripe mango fruits. Like you can see on the right hand side of the board, you will see a diagram of, of a mango fruit, a ripe one indeed. The question may be this way Can you? Um, state the observable structural feature of specimen B. What do you observe in specimen B? Okay, if you look um, very well, since they say it's ripe, but a ripe mango fruit, I have to state the color of this of this fruits on the board. What is the color of your ripe mango? Of course, you should know that a ripe mango should be yellow in color it should be yellow in color or somehow brown yellow or somehow light yellow i can never see yellow because that's how the color will appear and number two what other structure do you see what other thing do you observe in mango you can also see that it has a kidney shape kidney shape or c shaped kidney shape or c shape i can even see bean shape you can see it as a bean shape these are what you observe. You can also see that there is a remain of stark on it on the top on the on the on the top of the um, fruits. You see a stark on it. These are what you also observe from a mango fruit. Okay. Now the something I want to know is important from this um, specimen, which is what type of fruits is this specimen B type of fruits? The type of fruit. Now, fruit is basically divided into two. A fruit can either be succulent or dry. These are the two types of fruits: succulent fruits, dry fruits. Yes, in succulent fruit, there are two types of succulent fruits. A succulent fruit can either be a berry, can either be a drupe, or it can either be a hesperidia. These are the three types of succulent fruits. When we talk about succulent fruit, it means flesh fruit that are flesh and fruit that are dry. Okay, so that's why we have succulents for fresh, fleshy fruits, edible fruits in that case, and then dry fruits. Okay, when they come to dry, you have dry day scent and in day scent. But I'm not talking about that. I'm not going towards that area. I'm, I'm focusing on the fleshy fruits or succulent fruits. So, space, what type of fruit is specimen B? Specimen B is a fleshy or a succulent fruit. Okay. Reason why it is um, because sometimes the examiner will not know the reason why this space may be is that type of fruits. Basically, I won't just say it's a succulent fruit because there are three types of succulent fruits. So I will be basically be mindful of what succulent fruit is it? Is it a drupe? Is it a berry or is it a hesperidia? So this being that this fruit does not have so many seeds, and okay, and again, the seeds are sometimes succulent and fibrous. Okay, because of the reason that it has a fibrous fruit or either the the, the endo, endocarp is endocarp or seed is either succulent or sorry is either fibrous or succulent so based on this this succulent fruit is a type called droop so type of fruit is not just succulent but it is a droop mango fruit is type of fruits is droop. What do you mean droop? Droop is that it has one seed there. It doesn't have seeds scattered over. 
it has just one seed which is fibrous and also succulent. If a succulent fruit must be buried, that means that the seed and the endocarp must all be succulent. Not a case where it is either succulent or fibrous. But in mango, the endocarp or the seed is both succulent and fibrous. It may be succulent and fibrous. So based on this, mango fruits is a type of fruit called what? Droop. The reason why it is called is droop is because of one seeded and the seed is not scattered all over in the, in the, in the fruits and also the seed or the endocarp is not soft but fibrous. Okay, that is on that note. You, you, you will see another question from this same specimen. If you look at this specimen, critically from the diagram of this specimen, in, in biological diagram, you drew the pencils are used for uh, drawing also these structures. Okay, not just in ordinary pencil, but HB pencil. This line must be thin and continuous. Thin and continuous. And you must give your title of the diagram. This is longitudinal section of a mango fruit. That means this mango is cut from up axis down. Okay, so from what you have it as a fruit, a fruit has a pericarp or fruit wall. Fruit wall is called pericarp. The pericarp is um, divided into three. It's going be apicarp, the outer wall, uh, mesocarp, the middle wall, and the endocarp, the inner wall. You can see both walls are represented here. The apicarp is this wall, the mesocarp is the second wall, the endocarp is the third wall. Sometimes you can even use three lines to represent these walls. Apicarp, mesocarp, and endocarp. Since it is longitudinal, so you can still have your remains of what? Half of the stalk locked from the tree. Then you have a seed which is being protected by a seed wall. Good. How many seeds are you seeing here? Just one seed in a mango fruit. Just one seed. So that is what makes this fruit. Droop. Definitely, examiner is going to ask a question on this. What fruit type is mango fruit? Or what is the fruit type in specimen C? Each fruit type is droop. It can give reason why it is droop. Reason why it is droop is simply because seeds are fibrous or seeds are just one. Okay, away from that question again, we now look at um, the Mechanism of dispersal. Dispersal had to do with scattering of seed from these various habitats for proper growths where fruits we not have we have ease of competition. Where competition will be drastically reduced. So that's why most times dispersal is uh, dispersal is very very important in fruits and then uh, in fruits and seed. So basically, this seed or this how is it dispersed? Yes, dispersal of these fruits is by man and other animal. Yes, man and other animal disperse specimen B. Man and other animals are agents of dispersal of these fruits. Example one of the reason why you said so. Why will man and other animal? There are so many other agents of dispersal of fruits. Other agents apart from man and animal could be wind. Even water and sometimes explosive mechanism can also be an agent of dispersal. But specifically in mango fruit, mango fruit is dispersed by man and other animal. Why is this fruit dispersed by man and other animal? It is because it is edible. It's edible. What do, what do I mean by edible? Edibility or edible fruits are fruits that are easily eaten by man and other animal. So because it is easily eaten by man and other animal. These two organisms will easily help in the dispersal of this seed for proper what growth of the seed. So take notes, mode of dispersal will come out. And if it comes out, make sure you state it emphatically that this seed is dispersed by man or other what animals. You can mention monkeys, you can mention monkeys or any families of monkeys can also well dispersed as I say other animals because this organism this um, this uh, fruit is easily eaten by either animal or man. So it means it means that man dispars dispars edible fruits. Man dispars edible what fruits. Okay now what 
class of food? That's another question I'm putting up now. What class of food can be obtained from specimen from this specimen? What food type? What class of food can be obtained from this specimen? Okay, from your six classes of food, food you can obtain from eating this specimen B is water. Water is there and vitamins. Water, minerals, and vitamins. That's what you can obtain from here. You cannot obtain carbohydrates. You cannot obtain protein. So even if you want to taste these fruits for fat and oil, whether it, it contains fat and oil, carrying fruit taste, or whether it contains um, starch or whichever, it cannot give you positive results. So it is vitamin. It contains vitamins, minerals, and then water. That's the food class. Then uh, mango. In this diagram, you find that there are stated the magnification. You can vary. Okay, I just said that the magnification of mango fruit is small. Mango will measure up to 8 cm. So, diagram of paper of a live diagram should give you one. So, it could be times what, what is on paper is what is life. The that life mango is the same size with that size on paper. So, which is going to be exactly what I'm seeing is times one. So, I'm not magnifying by doubling it or by releasing it, so it is only what the size on paper equals to the size of the life diagram. So MGA is going to give me times one, just one of it. Specimen C is a transverse section, so it is giving it's a transverse section. So that means it's going to there's a, a cross sectional area of a tomato. The tomato that is cut this way is TS. A tomato that is cut from up to down is longitudinal. So over here, we are provided with a transverse section of your tomato fruits. What fruit type? The fruit type, just like this, is also succulent. Like I told you, there are three types of succulent fruits. No, they are not dry. There are three types of succulent fruits. Okay, it is either it's droop, berry, or hesperidia. So mango is a droop because the seeds are fibrous or sometimes succulents. Okay, and also the seeds are not scattered. But if you can see the seeds here are all what scattered, okay, around this fleshy part or the endocarp. Because of that arrangement, because of the so many seeds here, tomato is a berry. So fruit type here is berry. Fruit type is berry. So these two will also come when I'm differentiating. The two specimen A and B. If I say that this is a type of droop, this is a berry, you know why I'm saying so. So, it's case, it's case seeds here yeah, are scattered. So, but the similarity between both of them is that both are succulent, both are flesh fruits. But in terms of difference, yeah, this is droop and this is uh, berry. So, give reason why this fruit type is berry. Reason why it's berry is because it is the the seed is even eating. The, the seed is edible. It is not fibrous. It is succulent. It is fresh. So it is both edible. But here, seeds are not edible. You eat the seed of mango, you, you suck and you throw it away. So it is fibrous as you can see. It's very hard, it's like stony. So it, it's not edible. So that's why it is droop. But this one being edible and also succulent, this is a what? A berry. That is on the protein. And an analysis of the structural observation of this um, tomato. As you can see, this has been shaped. This is just like a round shape, round shape, round shape. So you can assume round. So there's a kind of a kind of disjunction, but the fact it means it's a round or circle. Okay, color can come in many color. If the tomato provided is right tomato, that means it should be right in color. Examine want to go far and want to find out from the uh, students a uh, give reason why this fruit is red in color. Every fruit that is red in color possesses a substance called lycopene. Lycopene is responsible for the red color of these fruits. Tomato, like all we use tomato. So the red color is due to this substance. Lycopene. Okay, this same 
this same substance is responsible for the red color in pepe, for the red color in watermelon, red color in um, gova, red color in pepe, red color in carrots, like opin. This is what is responsible for the red coloration of tomato fruits. Should in case this question is asked. Third question would be what mode of dispars are? Okay, just like mango is dispersed by man and other animal. Tomato fruit also being edible and fleshy is also dispersed by man and other animal. So both of them are dispersed by the same mechanism, which is man and other animal. Then because this seed is called because there are so many seeds scattered, and if you look at the arrangement of the seeds, the arrangement of the seeds are arranged in a circle in the central axis. What type of placenta? You no, know, you can see from this cross-sectional area, you can see the placenta, the center, central axis, where the seeds are arranged centrally. Okay, examiner want to know the actual type of placentation of this fruit. Tomato fruit has a type of axial placentation. Axial placentation. Axial tomato placentation is axial placentation. Axial placentation. Axial placentation is a clear case of placentation in which the seeds are arranged in the central axis of the fruit. That is when it is cut in transverse section or when it is cross sectioned, you will stand to see its arrangement of seed. What food class can be obtained from tomato? Yes, tomato is very rich in water, just like our food classes. There is water from tomato, it's a vitamin, vitamin, uh, there are mineral. So you can obtain food, three food classes there, water, vitamins, and then minerals from tomato fruits. Okay, and I would like us to look at the differences and similarities between specimen B and specimen C shortly. Alright, so we have the differences between the two specimen. Specimen B and specimen C. Specimen C on the left, specimen B on the right. Tomato and mango fruit. Just like I said earlier about the circling. The mesocarp cap that is this middle wall of the fruits. Here is circling. Here the mesocarp cap may be circling. Or fibrous that is the parts of the seed that is the seed coats okay and then endocarp is soft which is also bearing the seed here yeah. endocarp is hard and stony because that mango seed is just from part of the endocarp then tomato contains many seeds mango contains just one seed and then false endocarp is edible you can eat both the endocarp. Mesocarp is fused with the endocarp. You can eat it, that's why it's called berry. But the endocarp is not edible. Endocarp is that part that is the heart fibrous seed, which is usually thrown away. So these are the differences between tomato fruits that are specimen C and the mango fruit. But let's just discuss quickly their similarities. Yes. Being that both of them are both, both are fruits. Okay, both are formed from a fertilized ovary, both are fruits. You can see that. You can also say that both are succulent or fleshy fruits. Okay, you can say that both are edible to some extent. You can also say that both are dispersed by animal and also man. So these are the similarities and differences between specimen B and then C. And I look at we we'll go to part two of this specimen.